It's a brave estate agent who agrees to confess his sins. A good estate agent's a born blagger. If you've got more rabbit in Sainsbury's and more fun from Brighton, you're a winner. Um, the property market isn't hard to pick up whatsoever. It's um, easy, a monkey could do it. So what are the tips and tricks your estate agent doesn't tell you about? Change the angle by just 20 degrees and they'll think they're looking at a completely different property. And just what is he planning for you when he arrives at your front door? You've got a flat above a chip shop, I call it close to local amenities. The good estate agent is a master salesman. With a nice photograph and some well-chosen words, he can turn your home into someone else's dream. When I say it needs work, it's a complete dump. The Property Misdescriptions Act has spoilt some of the more flowery language. Um, in years gone by, we had some wonderful descriptions. Um, people used to say that a house was in need of some attention, which meant that it was almost derelict. People would say that it was uh, close to the bus route when you found the bus almost drove through the sitting room. You might have a garden that hasn't seen a lawnmower in about 10 years. You'd say that was semi-rural. I actually wrote this one uh, to combine the luxuries and elegance of uh, a bygone age with I can't write with it. I should, I should get the bloody spec, it's in the office. Well, compactly and small, basically. Because I just thought it was a total load of bollocks. <laughs> I just wrote it. Right. You're, you're at a house in the middle of nowhere, five miles from any, any kind of transport. You'd probably put down quite a location. Um, to combine the luxuries of modern living with the charm and elegance of a bygone age, which basically means you've got a new kitchen and bathroom. It may now be illegal to misdescribe a house, but rules are there to be bent, if not completely broken. We need to play with language. We're going to try our best to pull the wall over your eyes. From my point of view, if I walk into a, a shithole, um, I'm going to tell the clients or the candidates that there's room for improvement. Um, I'm going to use language that's going to make whatever it is I'm selling more desirable. But sometimes the estate agent gets caught out, as happened in the infamous case of the vanishing cul-de-sac. The Orchard, a house in a quiet cul-de-sac in the heart of Western Supermare. At least, that's how it was advertised by Darlow Estates. Well, this is certainly not a cul-de-sac, is it? Hey, by heck. It is like a racetrack for the middle of the night middle of the afternoon and like, it's, it's not a code, there's no cul-de-sac. On the map it's shown as a, a through route, so I can't really see that it's a cul-de-sac. Yes, the orchard has an entrance and an exit. So did the estate agent just forget to walk to the end of the road? We decided to ask his boss. Well, I'm sure he did. Um, the prob problem is he's probably come back perhaps very tired tonight, started to dictate six or seven sets of details, has made a genuine mistake. Um, no question of him having tried to do it, as I say, to deceive anybody. Um, it can happen. Uh, the human being is infallible at times. You can't always be 100% perfect. I think they just pull up at the house, file away, and try to flog it. Darlow's was fined £2,000 for their slight oversight. A good set of details will impress the buyers, but in the end, it's the photograph that tempts them inside. The estate agent will do almost anything to get a photo that grabs your attention. That's a lovely shot, but the problem is that the public have got a memory like an elephant for photos they've already seen. If the house hasn't sold after a couple of weeks, I need a different shot. Change the angle by just 20 degrees, and they'll think they're looking at a completely different property. Mike Harris is a property photographer, and one of the best in the business. He can turn a dump okay. into a very desirable residence. Right, OK, let's throw some light on this. Out goes the rubbish and the MDF furniture, and in comes a serious amount of foliage. Some lifestyle magazines, and the photographer's fire. It's not a real fire, but it will burn for the 30 seconds I need to take the pictures. That should do the trick. Get a few punters through the door. Yes, the room has changed from this into this. 
For the exterior, the rule is to get rid of the rubbish and the cars. But some agents have been known to make much larger things disappear. There was a house that we had on the market that wasn't selling that was next to a petrol station. And the manager asked, us, asked me, training at the time, to go out and take a picture of this property, but exclude the petrol station. So, of course, you know, that was done. It was put in the advert the following week, and, and we had an open day on it. We had that many calls on this 50,000 three-bed 1930s semi. So, of course, everyone turns up. I get sent down there to, to do the open day on the property. And, um, and people were saying, well, wait a minute, you know, in the picture there's no petrol station. There's a petrol station right next door to it. We were told to say, look, look at the security aspects of it, 24 hours a day, your house is in the light. Um, and look at the price, it's all reflected in it. Now here's a really good example of property misdescriptions. This is an agent who crossed the fine line between being clever and actually being quite stupid. He had a property in his books he was anxious to sell, but it had a huge electricity pylon right behind the house. And people who saw the pictures in his window just weren't interested in even viewing it. So he took a photograph of the house, tippixed out the pylon and stuck the picture in his window. And apart from not being able to sell the house, this clever man was also fined a thousand pounds for his efforts. House sellers should benefit from a cunning estate agent, but even they can fall victim to his charms. We all love to hear that our house has gone up in value, but homeowners be warned, overvaluing is the first and oldest trick an estate agent learns. Now, house sellers, don't be greedy. It's very tempting to take the highest valuation, but it won't always serve you well in the long run. The way that this works is that an agent thinks that your house is worth 100,000, but he tells you that it's worth 120,000 to play on your greed. Having got the contract at 120,000, he will then sign you for a minimum sole agency period of three or even six months. And then some weeks later, you get a phone call that says, I'm sorry, we've not achieved the price that we were thought we were going to. We're going to have to reduce the price. Radiator. Confessions conducted a survey of 130 estate agents. None of them admitted to regular overvaluing, but a whopping 90% claimed the competition did. Too much competition, and like you know that there are agents out there overvaluing everything. It's a practice which I abhor and have never partaken in. When one of my main competitors has been into the, in through the door and told them that it's worth 10, 20,000 pounds more than what I'm saying, um, obviously you, you're shown the door very quickly with a boot in your ass. To overvalue is one thing, but to deliberately undervalue your home is to commit one of the deadliest sins in a state agency. State agents can undervalue your property out of incompetence, or they could undervalue it because they're involved in some kind of a scam. And that's where it gets really serious. It's against the law, but does it go on? Yeah, absolutely. In almost every agency I worked in, this happened. The way that undervaluing works, say for instance, I would walk into a property and I would undervalue it by, let's say, £10,000, knowing full well that I have, that I have a buyer for it immediately. Um, and once I sell it to that investor that I've got in mind, in the back of my mind, I would get what they uh, say in the industry, a drink. If a vendor does trust you, you can undervalue properties. Um, say you undervalue a property for five, ten thousand pounds uh, and send it, sell it to a developer. You know, if there's £10,000 there, you're going to expect a big bump from the developer, whoever you've sold it to. But the estate agent isn't always after your money. On rare occasions, he may have other plans for your home. Well, here's a lovely story about an estate agent in South London whose owner, the owner of the flat he was selling, was going away for two weeks. So, with the best intentions, of course, he moved into the house to be available to show it around to people. But he got a bit over-enthusiastic and he moved into the man's bedroom and started wearing his clothes. When the owner came back, he found that he couldn't fit into his favourite suit because the estate agent had had the trousers taken up. And you'll not be surprised to hear that the agent got fired and is no longer in the estate agency business. Well, you go out to a club, you'd have um, 
pile of keys in the back of a car from properties viewings you've been doing that day. Uh, once upon a time, I did end up going back after uh, being out at a nightclub uh, with some young lady and uh, caught, caught at it by the landlord in the kitchen. So um, that wasn't too pleasing for me or for him or the company. So uh, end up losing that property, but um, it does happen. The value of your home is largely down to its location. So the estate agent will always try to persuade you you're moving to the right part of town. Buying yourself something in a prime location is always your best insurance against fluctuations in the market. Take Wimbledon Village, a small but very desirable part of southwest London. Here the estate agencies look like banks and the houses go for a bomb. We've had a good day today because uh, we've had a couple of sales go through, one just over three million, which is uh, obviously good news, and another one just nearly 800,000, so uh, it's been a very successful day for us. Unfortunately, not everyone can live in Wimbledon, unless you talk to an estate agent. Well, you've got West Wimbledon, very nice part of the world. You've got Wimbledon Common, an even nicer part of the world. You have South Wimbledon, not quite so nice. You have um, Wimbledon Chase. You have, and so uh, on. Yes, Wimbledon is becoming a very big place indeed. Take Rains Park. It's called Rains Park. It has its own train station. You can even drink at the Rains Park Tavern. You might think you're in Rains Park. Well, not if you're buying a house. No, Hawes & Co have advertised this property, barely five minutes' walk from Rains Park Station, as being in West Wimbledon. Well, an estate agent will always try and pretend that the property is in a better location than it really is by just sort of pushing it in the direction of the better area. So an estate agent might tell you that the property you're looking at is in the Hampstead Borders, where it's actually in Kilburn. Now, if you fall for that, that could be lovely because the prices are better. But unfortunately, once you've bought the place, you can never invite your friends over because they'll find you out. Sadly, people on the borders of a good area can end up slightly deluded. I think this is all very much part of their full total Wimbledon area. It's not uh, something separate to Wimbledon at all. Wimbledon, you know, it goes bar, restaurant, bar, restaurant, bar, restaurant, bar, restaurant. So you've got loads of choice and it's a good area to go out. I'd call it, my address is like West Wimbledon. This is sort of West Wimbledon, I guess. Oh yeah, definitely, because when the tennis is on, then, you know, this really is Wimbledon. I mean, you've got lots of tourists in the air and it's really busy and it's a really good atmosphere. But what if you can't claim the house you're selling is anywhere near a prime location? A different technique for selling the area is to put it in a triangle. It was a big thing a couple of years ago. <laughs> in everyone's details, there was an East Dulwich Triangle. Uh, North Dulwich Triangle still comes up quite a lot around North Dulwich Station. But... And what is the triangle? Uh, it was bounded by three roads. Yes, invent a shape for your area. A triangle, a diamond, or even better, a toast rack. And you'll have them queuing to buy. I think a triangle because it adds a bit of exclusivity. Uh, people think they're buying into something that's a, a little bit special, a little bit different from the norm. And in the end, is it real or is it just a wonderful bit of marketing? I think it's just a bit of marketing. It's, it is really just a bit of marketing. Finally, if you're really desperate, just pretend you're selling a house somewhere completely different. An English village. Inner city London. An English village. Peckham village. Yes, in the homeland of Del Boy Trotter, Lang Homes are promoting this development as Peckham village. Well, it might have a Del Boy image and uh, it takes a long time to shake the 20 years of only fools and horses, but you only have to come here to see how much it's changed and I'm not sure Del Boy would recognise it now. But would he recognise it as a village? The village pub had seen better days, the stream had dried up and the village bobby seemed a little preoccupied. But there were plenty of places to go for Sunday lunch. I think it's just a bit of um, estate agent speak. I mean, they've decided to create a a new area, give it a nice country feel in the middle of a council estate. It's working quite well. They're selling quite a lot of them, aren't they? So obviously fools the public. The high point of an estate agent's job is the viewing, the stage at which he can show off his full repertoire of skills. Well, in my business, there's absolutely no doubt that it's worth concentrating on the, on the female. Um, nine times out of ten, it's her that wears the trousers 
and uh, the man will do anything for an easy life. Not that everyone gets the chance to view. Buyers be warned. Just as you are picking the estate agent, so the estate agent is picking you. Most agents separate their buyers in categories. Uh, one category would be H for hot. Those are the people that can buy immediately. There's an expression in the business which is called phone, you know, we call it phone to car, which means at the moment you get a good property, you get on the phone and you get the buyers in the car. No point ringing them up, no point sending the details. If it's, a, if it's a good market, a hot market and a good property, you want to get them straight in there. So you get them on the phone, into the car and into the property. And if you're not on that, in that hot box, you're not going to get into the property first. And then you get the O category, O for other. They're the ones that are not in a position to buy something straight away. They have nothing to sell locally. They're probably a waste of time and they're filed most probably in the waste paper bin. When you've selected your buyers, you need to raise the stakes. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. The phone rings, it's Mr. Jones. He has his mortgage sorted out. He wants to buy a home and he wants to buy it now. And Mr. Jones wants to meet me at six o'clock for an hour to go and view properties. Well, whether I am free or not, I'm not gonna be free for Mr. Jones. It's like anything you want in life. If you build up the excitement inside, the hunger for it, and you, you have to work really hard to get it, you can be damn sure you're gonna appreciate it more than ever. Our main target was to create a, an urgency um, like a baby, if you take away the toy, they want the toy back. If you leave it with the toy, they don't want the toy. And it's exactly the same in this game. So I'd put him in the toy, for example, two o'clock to three o'clock the following day. Now he will come back to me, most cases, they're working, they're not available. But again, if Mr. Jones is to take an hour of work the following day, you know, he, he's going to be very excited about seeing this particular property. And I think he's going to want it even more. <laughs> A viewing can be a bit like a dance, in which only one of the partners knows the steps. The ambiance must be right. Ten years ago, it was freshly baked bread that created a nice smell. But times have changed. Well, the best ways and the easiest and quickest to creating a nice smell is vanilla essence. You take a thin tin tray, ideally thinner than this one, coat the tray, and what you want to do is coat the tray evenly with it. Right, should that should just about do it, not ideal. You preheat the oven to a low heat so it's warm, and if we place this in here, in the middle shelf, and leave it ideally 20 minutes, half an hour. Right, shut that, yeah, well, ideally 20 minutes, half an hour, and the, the smell will permeate through the house into the entrance hall and they give a nice welcoming smell. It's one of those things when people come in, I think, oh, that's, that's nice. Well, it's just extraordinary the power that smell can have for us. And it's something that you really must take account of when you're uh, showing somebody around a property. The nose can only detect new smells. So you might think that your dog stopped smelling when he was a 10-week-old puppy. In fact, he smells to high heaven, but you can't smell it anymore. Mr. Nadim, my son, okay? okay. Come back, come back tomorrow. Yeah, no problem. You the good me. agent will learn how to connect with the buyer. I'm going to have to learn how to. I'm going to have to learn how to. And for the really dedicated agent, the client relationship can become more than a little intimate. I got a call. A lady wanted to view a property. And she's just sounded giggly, laughing all the time. So I thought, OK. She sounds, you know, she sounded interested in one particular property. So she came down, and uh, when I see her, she was fantastic looking. So um, straight away, I took her out to the property. I'm showing her around. And um, with that, she jumped on one of the beds. She was bouncing up and down, saying, oh, I'm really bouncy bed. This is great. This is ideal, etc." And I'm like, OK. Anyway, one thing led to another. Um, it all kicked off. It went crazy. Um, but I mean, afterwards, like I say, yeah, obviously with my job and that, I, I felt terrible. I'm looking down, thinking, what, you know, what the hell have I done? But um, it wasn't necessarily, for, you know, for what I did. It was just the case I was trying to sell the property because I'd known the landlord for about four years. At the end of the viewing, try and get them to sit down. If you do that, it will make them feel at home, and it makes the room look so much bigger. And that's because, at the end of the viewing, you need to close the deal. Yeah, if you want to put some pressure on to make that sale work, 
make up some more viewings, make up a, another offer, that'll get them tied. I used to completely lie out of my teeth to close a deal. Um, you've got a deal on a plate um, and you want to close it. Obviously you want to earn your self commission and you want to get credibility within your company. Um, I used to do whatever I could possibly do in my power to close the deal. I used to say to candidates that I had um, three other offers on a property or perhaps I had eight other viewings later that afternoon. You'd make an appointment for eight, ten people to turn up to this property uh, on a Saturday morning and, and six of them would show up. They'd all be around the house and, and you'd whisper what you had to whisper into each of their ears in order to get the auction atmosphere going. If I was actually on a viewing with somebody, my phone would start ringing. I'd make sure it was ringing within five minutes of me being there. And I would be saying to the other person on the other line, yeah, yeah, still there, it's still there. Yep, you're going to be here in 10 minutes. And at that stage, they're handing over their money because they know that the person that you were speaking about earlier is on the phone. In fact, what they don't know is that um, it's my colleague back in the office. So yeah, as much pressure as possible to take their money. Houses, houses. Believe it or not, most estate agents are honest. Nothing today for you, sir. They really just want to sell you a house. House masonette, maybe. Ground floor. But never forget, they're all salesmen and rather good at their job. Ladies, interest you in a nice masonette? Public. <laughs>